In this tutorial, you're going to learn how to take 2D artwork and then set it up so you're able to rig that 2D artwork in Blender and then animate that 2D artwork using Rigify. You'll be shown how to place your 2D artwork so you're able to then move that 2D artwork in a sense to 3D meshes. You'll be shown how to place that 3D, those 3D meshes and then adjust a rig to match those 3D meshes. You'll then be shown how to use the rig or armature to generate a rig that allows you to easily pose as well as animate your character. You'll also be shown how to weight paint your character to make your poses work better uh, as you work with your rig. This tutorial is taught in a step-by-step -step fashion. I not only try to explain what I'm doing, but why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, this tutorial is something that I was happy to do. I had made another tutorial on this in a previous version of Blender. Uh, so I want to thank you for watching this tutorial and I hope that you enjoy it. Hi, this is Ali Arango of LittleGuyCGI.com. Today I'm going to show you how to make a character for cutout animation in Blender 2.93. So let's get started. Okay, what you see in front of you is a folder with a, a piece of artwork uh, in it from my daughter, Aliana Arango. This is what we're going to be using to make our cutout character. Uh, before we bring this into Blender, we're going to use a program called GIMP to uh, prepare this to be brought into Blender. Uh, GIMP is a free image manipulation program. Uh, you can go to GIMP.org to download it. Uh, sometimes on the program, GIMP is brought up. I hear people, uh, you know, they don't like GIMP or trying to downplay it. I have taught uh, the Adobe Suite professionally before. I've actually taught it numerous times. Uh, when it comes to image manipulation programs, uh, yeah, Photoshop is the king. However, when I typically choose to work, I typically choose GIMP. Uh, I have my own reasons for that. I can tell you about that in the comments if you're interested. Uh, GIMP is not as good as uh, Photoshop. Photoshop, I would say, is a 10. GIMP, I would give it an 8.5, uh, which is very good. Anyway, that's what we're going to use to set this up. Uh, so I'm going to left-click on this. I already have GIMP installed, so I'm going to right-click. And then I'm going to go to Open With. And then I'm going to select GIMP. Okay, here we are in GIMP with our uh, piece of artwork. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right. This is our layer panel in GIMP. I'm going to left click here. I'm going to right click. And then I'm, I'm going to select duplicate the layer. The main reason I do this is so that uh, if I make a mistake, I always have this uh, backup to go back to. Okay, what we want to do in here is separate the different pieces of our character. So that, that's why we're here. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go to these eyes. They let you hide as well as make the layers visible. I'm going to left click this bottom eye. Then I'm going to go to the upper left. I'm going to go to the lasso tool, the free select tool. Looks like a lasso. And I'm left clicking. I, let, I left click and let go, right? So uh, I'm going to take the arm right from here, right beneath this... Uh, piece of armor my daughter put there. So I'm left clicking and then dragging my mouse and I have that line. Left click, drag the mouse, left click, drag the mouse. So I'm outlining the, uh, the arm. The reason why I'm doing this is I want to separate this. From the rest of the body. There's multiple ways you could do this, by the way. Uh, I go back and forth in the different ways that I pick. Right now I'm choosing to do this, and this is probably my most, the way that I use the most. Eventually you will run out of clicks. Like there's only so many clicks you, you can do, be aware of that.
And if you did run out of clicks, you can uh, add two selections together. All right, so we have now have this whole selection here. So uh, I'm going to see those circles that are still on there. I'm going to press enter. So now this is, you know, its own selection. Okay, so with this selected, I'm going to, on my keyboard, hold control and then press X. And what I did was I cut that piece of uh, geometry. If I didn't have a keyboard, I could go to edit and then cut here as well. You can also see the, the shortcut keys, right? So what we're about to do is we're going to use this shortcut key, paste in place, which is control alt V, right? So I'm going to hold control alt V. Oops. Okay. With that up, I guess I couldn't do that. So I'll do control alt V. There we go. Now, one of the things I was talking about Photoshop and GIMP, one of the things that people don't like when you pay something in GIMP, you have this floating selection here. When you see this floating selection, this is definitely different from the last time I used Photoshop. Uh, you you want to put, click one of these uh, two green buttons here at the bottom. So I'm going to select that. And then this is just like another layer. Okay, so now that we have this separated, what I'm going to do is I'm going to double click. I'm going to name this arm left then press enter. Okay, with that done, I'll select the eye to hide that layer. Uh, this right here is our main body. I'm going to double click here and name this main body, then press enter. Okay, so uh, with this main body selected, this right here, it's very similar to this arm. We're going to use this arm as this arm as well. So we actually don't need this arm. So I'm going to use the, uh, I'm using the free lasso select again. And I am selecting this with the purpose of deleting it. And you'll see why. Uh, the main reason I'm not using this is because the other arm gives us a full arm. Where this arm is mostly obscured from view. So because of that, I'm going to press enter. Then I'll press the delete key, uh, hold control, press shift, press A. When I use shortcuts, most of the time, like if you go to select, uh, uh, you'll see that none, shift control plus A, you can see the, the shortcut keys there, as well as clear here, there you go. So you can get to the shortcut keys I'm pressing uh, by the menus up there as well. Okay, when doing this type of work, uh, one of the things that's very nice with it, and you, can, you can do a lot in Blender. Most most of the things that I do, as far as uh, graphic work, design work, are in Blender. However, uh, when it comes to doing image manipulation, you probably could, most of what I'm doing here, you probably could do in Blender as well. However, this, I, I still believe it's more efficient than doing in Blender. One of the things is the clone tool. Uh, the clone tool is available in most image, manip image manipulation programs. Uh, anyway, we need to use the clone. We don't need to. <laughs> there's one of the things when you're doing design work. There's multiple ways of doing things. Anyway, we're going to use it. We're going to use it to do this. So, there we go. So here's the clone tool. So this right here, we need to deal with this, right? So uh, what I'm going to do is I am going with the clone tool selected, I hold control. When I hold control, I'm able to sample an area. I'm actually going to press, I'm pressing the bracket keys to make this area bigger. So this is where I held control at, right? See the, cir see the circle here? This is where I am cloning from. So this, GIMP is going to say, uh, look at this and then put that original circle to where this circle that is currently moving. So now when I left click, it's it being GIMP is taking that original circle and letting me paint with that circle. And I can drag as well. However, I'm choosing to uh, left click. The 
depending on how much time you you take with this, you know, the typical thing is is like your your results will be better if you take more time. So I'm gonna actually drag. Now be aware when I drag. See how that circle moves. So I, I'm clicking. Now I want this to match up here. Why go with this color here when this color is here and it matches up with that? So I'll hold Control again, left click, and then now I take. From the, an advantage from left clicking is like without moving is I, I stay in that circle. So basically I have now made remade this leg here. This here we need to clean up. So I'll hold control, go back to here. The more time you take, the better results you'll get. So be aware as I'm doing as I'm doing the tutorial. Most of the people who watch the tutorials on this channel realize my tutorials can go on a uh, decent amount of time. So I'm, I try to think that as I'm moving along. Okay, so we have this here. So how do we deal with that? We have the eraser, so with this, we'll just erase this. These lines that came, this came from the arm. So when you're making a cutout character, one of the things you want to think about is, it's funny since we're doing this in 3D, but you want to think 3D, right? So this is where the arm came from, right? So we need to rebuild the body here. So we can go to the clone tool, we'll select here, We'll build this out and try to imagine the the uh, the body is here, right? So I also I want to imagine like here would be like the arms connected there. So I'll hold Control, select here, and I'm taking this color to, in a sense, put the flesh here. The reason why we're doing this is so that when the arm moves, when it rotates, that uh, there's things to for the arm to move behind. Now again. Depending on how much time you take to do this, you'll get better results. I'm showing you a tutorial, so uh, take as much time as you need, or or I should say as much time as you have available. This, don't be too caught up with this because most likely this will be covered up by the arm. So take as much time as you want or as, as much time as you have available. You'll see when I put the arm back, see that? So when I put it back, I can see this looks kind of strange here. So I'll take this away. See this here? That arm. I can go to, to here. That little piece right there. Like a little piece I cut off there. What I can do is I can click here. Duplicate, I tend to do that. Uh, force a habit sometimes can be annoying. Sometimes helps me out. So what I'm doing here is I'm that little small piece. I don't want to go spend all this time on it. So I'll hit a uh, control copy, control alt V, select here, hide this. And then now uh, this piece here is that left arm. I'll move this above the left arm, right? So that's all this layer is. I'll select this layer and then I'll, uh, merge it down so now we have that line back I'll bring back the main body okay so what we're going to do now is you see how this arm this arm is on top of the body right the way that image manipulation programs tend to work is a layer system the top layer is closest to you if that makes sense to you so what we're going to do is we're going to right click and then select duplicate this layer right this is arm left copy, we'll click here, and we're gonna name this arm right, right? So now what we'll do is we'll select this arm right, 
move this forward here like this and imagine like the socket would be like here so imagine like if this was an actual arm the socket would be there right so one of the things you can do is you can go to uh this unified transform tool click this we'll select here and then what we can do is see this circle here this is like the uh origin point things will rotate from this i can take this origin point move this to here to make this rotate like it's a joint then come outside and rotate this arm up like that then i'll select transform and then i'll go to the move tool move this back some like this and see this arm is on top right i want this to be underneath the body so i'll slide this arm right so it's underneath the main body and then i'll push this back Remember, uh, this was barely showing. I'm going to go back to the uniform, uh, unified transform. I'll select here. I'm going to hold control to zoom back some. Position that like that. Select transform. Now this is very similar to before. Okay, I'm going to hold control to zoom up. Hold the middle mouse button to pan. Uh, you want these arms to be hidden. You want to make sure you're selected on the main body. Make sure you're on the right layer. Uh, this part right here, we're about to take part of this leg. So before we do that, I'm going to select here this part that is around the leg. I'm going to press Enter. I'm going to hold Control, press C, and I'm going to hold Control hold alt then press v i'm then going to go to these uh one of these green buttons either one will work so this is uh and to get yourself this is uh we'll name this uh belt just so we know what this is right so now that we did that we're gonna and we did this because we're about to cut the leg when we cut the leg we're gonna cut this whole piece which would be part of this i want this to stay so there's multiple ways of doing it. I'm choosing this just so when I cut it, I'll just put this belt right back to the main body. So I'm going to reselect the main body. Go to the uh, lasso, free lasso select. I'm going to grab the leg. Doesn't matter on that transparency how far away I am from the leg. It matters when I get close to the body. So now as I get close to the body, we come up. Now see how I'm grabbing part of this belt? I'm going to cut this. So I want to have that. That's why we made that belt piece. So the transparency doesn't matter. So I'm coming down. So now I'm going to press Enter to lock that in. Then Control X, right? So now I'm going to uh, hold uh, Control Alt B to put that leg back. I'm going to go to this one of the green buttons. Click that. So now we have uh, this is the uh, left leg. So we'll name this left leg press enter okay so we'll hide that left leg and see how it looks like this is still there that's because it is belt see that that belt would have been gone so what we'll do is we'll move this belt so it's above the main body right because see the belt's not there that piece so now we'll right click and then we'll select merge down so now that's with the main body again. Okay, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna take the lasso, select, and we're thinking about this leg like as it's in 3D space. That's why I'm going you know, into the main body as far as you know, I did. We come to this transparency, we don't have to be concerned about the area that's not, you know, it's, it's just transparent. So I'll press enter once. And then now with that selected, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold control, press C, and then I'm going to hold control, hold alt, then press V. So now I'm gonna go to one of these green buttons. So now we have this pasted layer. I'll double click this and I'll name this 
leg right. Okay, so I'm going to hide the leg right. Make sure I'm on the main body. You want to make sure that you're on the correct layer. So now we already have the, the leg right, so we want to get rid of this graphic here. I'm selecting, so I still have this black line. So now I'll press Enter. And then remember, we can go to up here. If you don't have a delete button, you can go to clear. Uh, it'll do the same thing. I'm going to press delete. Then I'll hold control, hold shift, press A. You can also do that from, yeah, select. You can do the same thing from there. Okay, so let's deal with the tail. Make sure you're on the right layer. I have the, the free lasso select. I'm selecting the tail, I'm going to press Enter, hold Control, press X. Then I'm going to hold Control, hold Alt, then press V. Go to this first green button. And then I'm going to double click here and name this tail. Then press Enter. Okay, when it comes to the tail, you want to think of the tail as going connected to the spine. So with the tail layer selected, I'm going to select here, act like this is the tail. I imagine it would connect around here. I'm going to press enter. Now what I'm going to do is go to uh, the eyedropper tool. So I have the correct color. Then I'm going to hold control and then comma. Oh, look at that. It's huh. interesting. I'm going to hold control, hold shift, hold A, press A. That's interesting. So the selection is limited to here. That's interesting. Okay, so what I'm going to do is make a new layer. Move the tail above that new layer. Right click, select merge down so now I have this uh, the tail being this full area here so since I already have the color selected I'll manually pick where I think the tail should be be aware that I'm painting on the tail layer I'm not painting over top of in the layer of main body all right so now what I'm going to do is go to this layer and then name this tail Okay, what I'm going to do now is select the head. Make sure you're on the main body. Try to dodge these black lines here. So after I had selected, I'll press Enter, Control X, then Hold, Control, Hold, Alt, then press V. Then I'll select one of these green buttons there. I'll double click here and I'll name this head. Okay, I'm gonna hide the head. I lost on the ear. I'm gonna go to main body. That ear I'm fine with losing that small piece. We need to have like a, a piece for the head to be on. It's so one of the things when you're doing this uh, cutout, you need to have what's behind. So you, you kind of imagine the neck would be like this. I can bring back the head to see. That looks good to me. Okay, I'm going to select this armor flap piece here. I'm going to press enter, hold control, hold X, hold control, hold alt, press V. Then I'm going to select this green button here. I'm going to name this uh, armor front piece.
Okay, so what we're going to do is uh, we're going to bring back our pieces. And we want to separate these pieces from the body. So this is 1024 by 1024. Let's see, so we'll select the arm, push the arm up here like that. We'll select the head, move the head over like that. Let's select the left leg. Select the right leg. arm right the armor piece and what I'm doing is I'm positioning uh, trying to get this all to fit we need this to be separated out for the work that we're going to do in blender Okay, so this main body gives us a decent amount of space. Okay, that just about works. This uh oops, arm left. Okay, that's Arm right. So we needed these all separated. This should be good how it is. Uh, so what I'm going to do, these are all separate layers, right? I'm going to go layer, new from visible. Now they're all this layer. So I can hide everything but visible layer. I duplicate this, right? So we have all of these different pieces here. Uh, so what we want to do is go to File, Export As, I'm going to name this Art Asset, PNG. Export, this menu will pop up, select export. Uh, in GIMP, you don't want to save as. If you're saving a GIMP, if you're working with a GIMP file and you want to save this actual file, you can click save as for the uh, GIMP file and save that. Uh, if you want to get this picture out, you click export. Also, you want to make sure that you still have, so if I hide this, this original picture to uh, go back and this should still be in, in your folder as long as you export out as a different name so this will allow you to to put your character back together okay here is blender 2.93 so i'm going to left click with the cube selected i'm going to press x choose to delete the cube we can go to edit preferences Add-ons, make sure you have a check mark next to 3D view navigation. If you search for images as planes, you also want to have that add-on. And when I say add-on, these are all things that are included in the default version of Blender. They just have to be turned on. So you want to look for images as planes. You can search here or you can go down on the list, put a check mark next to that. Okay, that first add-on is so you can press the uh, N key go to view and then with the add-on activate you'll see 3d navigation we'll select front view okay what we want to do now is hold shift press a go to image as long as you put a check mark next to the images planes add-on you'll see this we'll select that 
we want to look for where the art asset is at. This is what you want. Select this. You have these options. Look to the right. You'll see printable, shadeless, emit. We'll select emit. And uh, the rest of these settings are fine. We'll select import images as planes. Uh, there is the image. To get this on the right angle, I'm going to press R to rotate on the Z axis, negative 9, 0. Then press Enter to lock that in. I'm going to zoom on this. In on this, I'll hold shift, press B. I'll draw a zoom box that zooms right in. The reason why you can't see the image is you need to look to the upper uh, right. When you're by default, the, these are the viewing ports, right? So these are different modes where you can view things in Blender. So this one is the default one. To see, we can click this one, which is the uh, when you hover, you can see what it is viewport shading. This is what you want. I'm going to roll my mouse even more. I'm going to hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. I hit shift and middle mouse button to pan. You can also use this hand. I really like these controls here. You can zoom with these controls. You can uh, uh, rotate, which I'm not going to do. Uh, these controls are excellent. So I'll use most of the time the shortcut keys. However, most of the shortcut keys I'm saying you can get to by these right here. These are spectacular. Okay, what we need to do now is we need to uh, put basically polygons over this. So how do we do that? First thing we're going to do is we have this in here, right? I, I want to make it so we can't select this by accident. So if you look to your upper right, you'll see it looks like a funnel. If you click there, you'll see this uh, restriction toggles. Select the arrow, right? And then for art asset, you'll click the arrow. What that means is you cannot select this art right here, which is what you want for now. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is I'm going to, here's a 3D cursor. The 3D cursor in Blender is important because where the 3D cursor is at in Blender is where objects tend to come into Blender at. I'm going to hold shift, press A. I'm going to bring in a plane, all right? There's the plane. It's big and, you know, going across. We're going to press R to rotate on the X axis, 9, 0. Press Enter to lock that in. We'll press S to scale this down. I'll go to the left, select the move tool to move this up. We'll start with this arm over here. Okay, with this plane selector, we're going to go to the upper left and select edit mode. So with edit mode selected, what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and then select subdivide. I want to come down the arm. But before that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use another add on that's built in in Blender. It's edit user preferences. Make sure you have a check mark next to loop tools. I'm going to right click. You see this loop tools here with that image that uh, uh, fate, that the subdivided plane selected. I'll select circle. It tends to be a very nice shape for uh, going over with polygons, what we're working on. So I'm going to press R to rotate like this. Go to the move tool towards the left. I shrink this down till it's about arm size. And uh, while I have just this here, I'm going to hold shift, press B, move this to here, hold shift, press B, move this to here, hold shift, press D. I think it was, it's shift D, it's to duplicate. Move this to here, shift D, move to here, shift D, move to here, shift D, move this to here. You can press G as well. Okay, so with this like this, what we can do is I'm going to go to Edge Select towards the upper left, select the edge here. Whoops, here. I'm going to hold Shift, press B. This lets me draw a zoom box so I can focus on the arm. I'm going to hold Control and then select here. The This, I'm holding Control. My finger is holding down Control, all right? So I'm going to right click here. See how the curve, like it actually curved? Like, like this went here and then down. So when you hold control, uh, that's one of the nice things that Blender does. I'm going to hold, I'm still holding control. I'm going to right click again here. Uh, so now with that done, what I'm going to do is select here. 
I'm gonna press S to scale on the X axis like this. I'll select this, move this out like that. I'll hold control press R, R to put a loop cut here. I'll select here. What I'm trying to do here is cover over the uh, artwork. Control R. Once I have the basic covering down, I add loop, loop tools to uh, make this match up more closely with the art. Hold control. Here I'm looking at, I want to have a, a polygon come this direction, right? That's kind of what I'm thinking. So since I have this here, I can push this here, push this here like this. The more time you spend, the better results you'll get. I'll select this edge here, hold control. That edge is not totally taken care of, but for the most part taken care of. I can go to vertex select to uh, make that match up somewhat better. Okay, so I can see this here. So I'm gonna select here, bring this out, this, oh, wrong. Delete that. I want the edge, there we go. So I can switch, put a loop cut here. So what I'm gonna do is try to go through this and then we'll come back and refine. So this is quote unquote good for now. We'll select here, hold our, oops, I was still connected there, I right click. When I right click, I do kind of like a, it's almost like a mini undo. This is still selected. You wanna be careful so you can hold control, press A to deselect. I'll hover here, press L, I'm pressing R. See this line, I'm using this like a target to kind of aim down the body. As a matter of fact, probably since this is so big, I'll select here. This will take up the main mass of the body here. And go from here, select here. So we'll come back to that. This face is mainly actually pretty good. I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel back some, hold shift as well as the middle mouse button, pan. I'm gonna hold alt to totally deselect, hover here, press L, press R. Reason why I'm doing this is I'm kind of using this line as like aiming down, right? And I'm gonna hold shift. So now I'm gonna hold control, which is let me direct the geometry, which is very nice. So we'll move on, hover here, press L, press R. Again, using this to, to aim basically, right? We're on edge select. We've been on that most of the time, holding shift, holding control. This is so nice how like this is aimed here, but when I move my mouse over here, see how the geometry follows, very nice. And to be honest, we could do one arm uh, and just duplicate that arm, but we'll, we'll do two, you know. Over here, press L, press R. Again, using this line to aim down. I mean, I can do a straight line like this. I'm purposely doing more thinking of like the geometry. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you would have to add geometry for the, the animation to work anyway. So that's kind of like why I didn't just go straight down. I could have. It's not a bad thing to do. I pressed L. I, I might have been selected, but I wasn't. You could hold, you might want to press, make it a habit to press Alt A before. It's not necessary. Hold Control. So I'm trying to get the basic like, play. This is like aim fairly well there. Start to turn here, turn there, then turn here. 
So most everything is covered with geometry. The main pieces, I mean. Okay, we're gonna refine, so I'm gonna hold control, put a loop cut here. Zoomed in by rolling the mouse wheel. It's amazing what Blender can do with 2D uh, work. This method here is very useful for making quick characters that don't take a lot of power. I'm gonna hold control, roll my mouse twice to put two loop cuts in. Those of you who are used to this channel know that the tutorials, you know, they can be a decent length. Uh, the, the thing I'll say about that is if you really want to learn how to how to do it, like t typically, I trust me, I, I'm, I'm appreciative of the tutorials on YouTube. I, I learned a lot of things. I uh, was watching CG Dive the other day. Guy in there uh, was showing how to weight paint. And, uh, excellent. Uh, and I, what I liked about what he did was is he he spent time uh, going into detail about the tutorial uh, that he was working on, which was weight painting. Uh, the tutorials that are fast, I, I appreciate those tutorials too. That being said, most of the time I have to go, I have to learn the stuff that they're not covering. Uh, right now, YouTube seems to like shorter tutorials. However, if you're doing a tutorial and you watch it and it's quick, yeah, it's nice, you know, you're probably gonna have to do, there's a good chance you're gonna have to learn, spend a decent amount of time trying to learn, which is unsaid in that fast tutorial. So sometimes people look at my, why is it so long? It's so long, it's so long. It's like, it's a com it's pretty complicated. Yeah, this other person, uh, uh, this other person showed how to do, you know, this thing in five minutes. And I'm like, well, uh, about that whole five minute thing, it's good and sometimes very good if you don't have time and you need the concept, you understand basically what's going on. However, if you don't understand, you're probably gonna spend more time finding another tutorial that's longer telling you what to do. So anyway, these tutorials, they, yeah, they can, they can get up there uh, in length. I hope that the length is, for the most part, justified. Okay, so I need a loop cut here. So what I'm gonna do is look, see where I need loop cuts. Try to put them in. So I can fairly quickly go through this. This here, this looks pretty much, this looks almost good to go. Um, I'm covering up the drawing from my daughter, Eliana Arango. I'm covering it up with this geometry. The more time you spend doing this, the better results you'll get. Be careful. Uh, as an artist, sometimes you can over-focus. That's where doing tutorials, one thing nice about it is like, it, it helps you to, sometimes it helps me working to say, uh, look, it's a tutorial. And that, that helps me to get done Here is I'm trying to see this geometry. A little strange there. I'm gonna stretch this out just seeing the flow. Okay, I can see it now. The flow was a little strange. 
uh, hold control, put in two loop cuts here. The edge select here, push that back like that. Back to vertex select. Yeah, the geometry I'll have this could give me issues as far as animating, so straighten that out some. That's my thought process. One of my thought processes. I'm gonna go to edge select. Nope, I missed it. There's edge select. Select here right out to there, here, hold control, hold control, I'll hold control, put a loop, I'll put three loop cuts, drag that down like that, vertex select, I'm looking at this in 3D space. Let me, I was wondering why I could see that. It's probably on top. So if you have an issue, uh, zoom back, push this out some like this. Uh, like you can't see, right? Hopefully you weren't dealing with that issue right now. What you can do with this is uh, There's a couple of things that can be done. One of them is you can with this select it, go here, visibility, viewport display. You can change this to wire, and that will allow you to see as you work, and that stays in edit mode as well. Okay, I'll zoom in here. This is very similar to retopology that you would do on a 3D model. Put in Control R. Go to Edge Select. Vertex Select. Interesting. I came out of that so I could go like this. Hmm. Yeah, it should work. Let's bring this back. out like that I'm gonna hold shift as well as the middle mouse button pan hold control control or put a loop cut in Or be aware the more loop cut you put in, the more work, the more you're gonna have to line up your vertices or edges, so be careful.
loop cut here. Out there. Okay, back to vertex select here. Select this here. That's the scale there. If you can line these up, you know, if it makes it easier on you, go ahead. That looks fairly good to me. Okay, now that we have the geometry covered up, we want to make sure we have joints and, you know, uh, loop cuts in places so things can bend correctly. So see this, the knee would be around here. So I'll put extra loop cuts there, here, two there. This is like, no, this isn't. Purposely going past this uh, frayed material. Don't think you have to go to each piece of fray since this is an image we're covering up. Uh, this arm here, I'll put a loop cut there. Put a loop cut here. I'll put some extra, yeah, there. putting loop cuts where I think uh, the character would you know bend uh, if there wasn't already enough loop cuts there that's my thinking okay what we're gonna do now is go to object mode we're gonna go to looks like the square we're gonna change this from display as wired to textured this kind of lets us see I said that you know the, the more time you spend, the better results you'll get. And uh, yeah, that actually helps out because I can see that this isn't covered up as much as I want. It's here. And loop cuts to compensate so I can cover this up. Going through, making sure it's covered. That's what's going on? Or at least what I think should be adequately covered.
All right, prepare yourselves. I'm going to speak fast so we can get into our UV editing. You ready? If you, if I'm going too fast, you can go to YouTube settings. If you're watching this on YouTube and slow this down in the settings, if it's not fast enough, you can speed it up. Here we go. I'm going to go to the upper left, go to object mode. I'm looking at these tabs here. These tabs here are to help us work, right? We're going to select UV editing. The view is changed. That's fine. We'll zoom in. Zoom in. We'll press N. Go to view. Go to 3D navigation. This is what we did before. We're going to go to front. Now we're going to press, uh, we're going to go to the middle top of the screen. Go to face select. Press A to select everything. Press U. This brings up our UV unmapping. We want to go to project from view. Project from view. Here is uh, the project from view. It takes exactly what you see here and puts that here. We're now going to go to open. We're going to go to where our main uh, asset was that art asset. So we're going to that folder. And then uh, here's the asset. I'll select open image. So there it is. I'll roll the mouse to zoom back. Okay, you can see this doesn't match up exactly as far as the size. We'll press A, then we'll press S to scale this up. Press S again. We'll press G to move this into place. Press S to scale. G, and hopefully, it should, for the most part, line right up like you see there. Okay, when you set this up, you'll notice that here you don't see this. That's because what we need to do is go to the shading node. Uh, in the shading node, here is our image. I'm going to press N, go to view. This is very similar to what we did before. Zoom down, go to front. Now I'm going to hold shift, press B to draw a zoom box. This is where we shut up shaders, then colors, right? We'll go to the right, select this circle. This is our shader tab. We'll select new. We have this thing called the principal shader. This is a node, this is a node. This is how you work with colors, shaders, and Blender. Uh, what you want to do is add an image node. So we're going to click add uh, texture, image texture. So image texture, image texture node. So we'll select that, then click here. So now this is ready to go. Okay, so what we need to do in here is we need to click open that same thing back to that. There's multiple ways of getting to this. I'm just, I'm showing you this way. We select here, select open. And then we go from color. This is important when you're working with nodes. See how this is a yellow color. This is a yellow color. You might not be able to see that. See that? So I'll zoom in. The colors kind of show you how things should go. So this color goes the base color, right? See that there? So now we can see our, our drawing, right? Now, see how you see this black here? This is a transparent image. The reason why you see that is this is a, that, that think of transparency as being an alpha, all right? See this alpha here? See this alpha here? We're gonna go from this alpha. Notice that this is gray and that's gray. That alpha to that alpha there. So even now we still don't see this being transparent. Uh, and what we need to do is zoom down in here, right? See this blend mode. I think we can change this to uh, alpha clip. And now that is transparent. Uh, there's other blend modes as well. So remember to get the transparent, you're going to need alpha clip. Alpha hash, alpha blend works as well. We might even change that. Okay, now that we have that set up, we're gonna go to layout. Right underneath this e, it, the e in here, there's this, it looks like a triangle. There's no triangle there, it's a shape basically, and it's a shape in between this and this window, right? So if I have, you can tell that you're in the right shape because my mouse here is a, it's a arrow. My mouse here is an arrow. See that, how it turns there to that cross symbol? I'm gonna right click and then select vertical split. Now I have this line here. So I'm moving. I didn't click anything, but when I do click something, left click, now we have this split here, which is useful. Uh, 
what I want to do is make this an image editor. I also want to take away this. So this here, these tools, I can press N to take that away. This here, I press T to take away the tools, N to take away this. What I want to do here is, uh, I'm going to click here in this corner so you can see the blender. So I'm going to select here, go to image editor for here. Reason why I'm doing this is what I want is the, I have to roll my mouse to get to this. I'm going to select open and uh, again, that picture. This main, no, not this time. This time we don't want this. This is what we've been to. Now we want this. And the reason why we have this, now we have this reference to put this back together. Okay, what I want to do is split this again. So I'm going to left click here. Whoops, that didn't work. There we go. Left click and drag. Last time I right clicked, this time I left clicked and drag. I want to have a flat space here, right? I'm going to use the hand to pan. I can hold shift in the middle mouse button to pan as well. Don't need this, so I'll press T to get that away. I'm using this as a viewer mode here. I'm using this as a viewer node as well. This is going to be the main work area. I have this here so I can rotate that space. Okay, when we were setting things up in GIMP, we had one you know object on top of another, and we use layers to do that. Here in Blender, we can actually use physical space, actually 3D physical space uh in the digital world of course so here's this art asset let's select high that there was a double image because that was you know behind there so what we need to do is uh, assemble these pieces so you can move here right we're in object mode so you're going to need to go to edit mode you can look here uh as we as we do this even though our angle here is different so i'm going to hover here press l right I'll move this up. See how this is intersecting? So this needs to come forward slightly. This arm here needs to come slightly forward. This arm here, press L. Move this up needs to go that's where I was talking about the layers slightly back you want this to be close so it, you want some space. be careful you don't have too much space uh, this here I'm actually going to select that press P and then choose selection to separate that same thing with here I'll hover here press L press P to uh, Bring up our separate menu and then choose selection. So those are actually outside. Let me go outside here. So they, they don't confuse. Move them to the side. Go back to here. All right, so we'll select this leg. This needs to come up. This needs to go back some. I want to change the proportions of these, which is fine. So I'm going to press S to scale on the Z axis because I want these legs to be actually longer. I want this leg to be closer to that, so I'll press S to scale on the Z axis. Both selected. This leg needs to come forward. Be careful of the distance. You don't want that to come forward that much. Let's 
I increased the scale on this slightly. Head needs to see how this is intersecting with the body. So I want to rotate the arms and the legs so they're easier to set up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click here. I put this here right where the joint would be at, right? Now go to this global. I set this to cursor. So now this piece will rotate on that cursor. So now I can press up. Oh, it's not rotating on the cursor. Uh, not that that's big of a, that big of a deal, but it's interesting. Hard to rotate on the Z axis is what we want. So I'll move this into place like this, putting this in a position where it's easier to uh, to rig to set up for the rig. It would have been easier if we rotate it right on that. I think since this is all one piece, that's fine. I'm gonna press R to rotate on the Z axis. Um, here I'm looking at that ax point. I don't want that touching the leg. This leg here, I can press R to rotate on the Z axis to, oh, look at that. There we go. I'm trying to make R to rotate on the Z axis. Whoops, no, this is right. Make sure that there's enough space so that uh, when we gotta rig this, there's not confusion, so to say. I'm gonna go to back to object mode. Okay, what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna hold shift, press uh, press R to put the 3D cursor there. I'll put the 3D cursor there uh, because I'm gonna shrink this, shrink that down some. You know what? This isn't needed now. So what I'm gonna do is left click here. Uh, see, that can be frustrated frustrating I'm gonna right click here and select join areas yeah right click here join areas there we go all right so I put this here because the objects in blender tend to come into blender where the three cursor is at right that down slightly what I'm going to do is uh, let's press in view front view and to take that away I'm gonna hold shift press a and then we're gonna to go to armature and we're gonna select about to select human meta rig now this is yet another add-on it's in the default version of blender you need to make sure you have that add-on selected so just like you have to put an add-on for view uh, you need to go to edit user preferences Look for Rigify. You can search in the top for Rigify. Make sure you have a check mark next to Rigify. If you don't have that check mark next to the add-ons for Rigify, you will not see this option. So once you've done that, or if you have that done already, you can select Meta Human Rig or Human Meta Rig. This comes in. I'll zoom back so you can see that. Okay, we're gonna use Rigify to rig uh, this cutout character. Uh, my thoughts on rigging, I spent a lot of time rigging. Those who are, of you who are used to this channel, uh, I like rigging, I think rigging is fun to be honest. Granted, it can be tedious. I, particularly, I, I, I enjoy rigging. I generally like making my own rigs because I know what the rig will do because I built the rig myself. That being said, uh, depending on what project you're working on, it does take a considerable amount of time often to set up a rig. Uh, Rigify, in the past, I actually, in the past I've had issues with Rigify. Uh, I don't know if I learned how to use it better or the, the newer version of it is better, but Rigify works well now. So I'm starting to use Rigify more. Uh, if you rig or are interested in working with characters, animation, uh, the way I got into rigging was I 
wanted to animate characters, didn't want to rig, had issues with the rig so much that I was like, it'll be easier to animate these characters if I learn how to rig. So I learned how to rig, right? So now that we have Rigify, or it's been around for a while, I'm using Rigify. Should you still learn to rig? If you're doing with a, a working with a, a project, uh, if it's simple, Rigify will give you an excellent rig. It will work probably well for you. Uh, that being said, if things come up, it is very useful knowing how to rig without an automatic rigging thing, depending on how deep you are into the subject. So if you are working with a character and uh, you're working with all kinds of different things and your main thing isn't rigging, use Rigify. Uh, it's still useful for you to be able to rig, know how to rig outside of Rigify for if issues come up or you're, you're needed to do more, called to do more advanced things with rigging. Okay, so with Rigify here, see how this, it came in right here in the bottom of the feet of Rigify or right with this. You don't want to move this point. What you want to do, like you don't want to move Rigify so that this moves. What you want to do, because we need to resize this, right? So you want to go to edit mode with Rigify selected, go to the cursor. Normally the cursor will be on global. We have it set for the 3D cursor, which means that it will do like we want it to do, which it'll scale according to this. So what we're going to do is, whoops, it's not scaling to that. Hmm. Because I'm in edit mode. That's interesting. That's fine. I'm, I'm, my brain, I'm like, I thought that it scaled to that. It's not that big of a deal. I just thought that it did. So I'm scaling it and pushing it down. All right, so you have all these extra pieces. Don't let them concern you. Like all these face pieces, for the most part, just ignore them. This should work fine without them. Uh, so what we need to do is position this and put this, match this up with our cutout character. Okay, I'm going to hold control, hold the right mouse button, select here. Oops, do not do that. I want all of these pieces. So I'm using the, the select when there's a bunch of bones like here because of Rigify. Mm, hold alt, press A to deselect. It needs, we didn't, basically what's happening, we're setting up this skeleton. We're going to generate a rig. When you rig something in uh, Blender, this can well, grab what you're trying to control, this skeleton here, particularly with Rigify. Once you set this up, you generate a rig that has all the different constraints that rigging generally requires. If you have bones separated too far from each other, Rig if the generate rig will not work, and that is what we are using to do the main work of not having to set up a rig. Like we're setting up the rig in position, but that's not just setting up a rig. You normally have to put the, the armature bones in in a position, and then you have to set up constraints and things to make the uh, armature work how you want it to work. Rigify will take care of that for us as long as we can generate the rig. If we grab bones like these and separate these, I'm pretty sure, as well as here, as well as that, that head from the, the gener that uh, generate rig will not work. So anyway, as far as all the bones, like for the hands, don't be concerned about that. Hold control. Get the hand in a general position. Ignore the fingers since we don't need them. Just ignore them, get them in the general position where it should be. Elbow joints, get them where they should be. They hit it with all this complexity on here. You can hold control, hold the right mouse button. Ugh. I'm going to press C, hold the middle mouse button to deselect there. You can pull all this geometry over towards the head. Do not be concerned about the different pieces. Uh, this shoulder joint is interesting. You want to be concerned about this. Putting this in. So see I'm moving both of the two pieces together. That should keep Rigify working. I'm pretty sure we have to move this. Like 
like that. And then this shoulder joint, we need to put this in uh, place here. I think we're good for that. Okay, when you're setting up a rig, uh, as far as like the IK joints, particularly the legs, one of the things you want to do is see this uh, leg joint right here. You basically want to have the legs bent in a way where the uh, IK joints kind of know where they go. So see how this leg is going straight up and down. So when I grab the uh, eventual handle that should be here, this leg won't know where to go. So I can kind of tell how to go by pushing this forward like this. So by having it like this, what should happen is now the leg knows like when I push up, I want this leg to bend like that. Same thing with this leg. Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to left click to deselect or I'll hold alt, press A to totally deselect. I'll go to the upper left, go to object mode, I'll hold the mouse button to rotate. This is too far out. So we'll take the move tool to put this, push this back. So now this uh, rig is intersecting with our artwork here. Okay, with that done, I'll roll the mouse wheel to zoom back. I'm going to press in or front view. So now with this set up, we uh, can generate the rig. So to generate the rig, you want to make sure you have uh, this, these bones here selected. You'll look to the right. Looks like a little figure person here. We'll left click there. And then when you look down in this list, you'll see generate rig. So we'll left click on generate rig. So there's the rig that has been generated. Okay, when I, one thing I want to make clear is this generated rig is not this. This is a, an armature that we use to set up like the bends in this generated rig. However, this generated rig is one object. This object that we work with, the other rig, is are two separate things. We're going to select this original rig that's not connected to that. This was used to generate this, but this is its own separate object. We're going to press M and then we're going to move this. We're going to uh, move M brought up to our move to collection menu. We're going to select new collection and then select OK. Uh, this is the new collection here. So we're going to go to this eye towards the upper right, hide that. Uh, and now we have our generated rig to work with. The reason why we generated this rig is because see how this looks different from the other bones. This has uh, shapes that have been set up to make posing easier to understand as well as uh, to to uh, the shapes are set up to make the uh, posing easier. This uh, generated rig, what it has that the other rig that we just hid didn't have is this has constraints set up to work with the rig. So you use a rig to connect the, uh, the artwork in this case or mesh to a, uh, you, you use like rigs to to move objects right so this is 2d artwork we're using to connect to this rig uh a typical armature that you put in does not have the constraints and things set up this one now has all that anyway with that being said we're going to click on this rig we're in object mode right so we're pulling this down so this wasn't in the uh exact position but you see when we pull this down this is for the most part and I'm paying attention to the hands as far as the placement, what I'm doing now. This is generally where we where the other rig was. I'm going to go to the side so we can see that this is not in the correct position as far as like, see how far this is in front. So we'll push this back so that this intersects with the, uh, the artwork. I'm rotating so that we can see that that is intersecting. Okay, what we want to do now is we want to connect this 2D art to this generated rig, right? Uh, this rig right now, we can't see all of it. So with this little running man, looks like a little running man. I've heard other people call it a running man. We'll go to viewport display. We'll select in front. And what that does is that makes this rig show up in front of uh, our 2D work here. Uh, what we want to do now is we want to connect the connect the artwork to the rig right however we don't want to connect it to all of these shapes so it should be one of these shapes here i believe this is the one so this one when i clicked here all these things are layers right and each of these layers has different groups of uh armature bones on them armature 
Yeah, armature bones on them. This right here, this third one from the left, it's highlighted blue. Uh, this has what we need as far as the bones that we want to connect our, actually connect our 2D artwork to. So the thing, a lot of what you saw disappear that you don't see here now is things, shapes and things used to make posing easier. We don't want that now. Our main goal that we want now is to connect, connect this 2D artwork up to the rig. Then we can add back in some of the shapes to use that for posing. However, you know, that that's in the future. We want to make this rig, this 2D art move when the armature rig moves. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is first you want to select the 2D art. The order is very important. We hold shift, then we'll select the armature. I'll let go of shift. I'm gonna hold control and then while holding control, press P. This brings up our set parent to menu. So then we wanna select uh, with automatic weights. So left click, so that has, uh, so we've now connected this 2D art to this armature rig. Okay, what we want to do now is make sure that the uh, connection has happened. So we have one, two, three, four. I'm looking at the group. So there's group here, group here, group here, group here. So let's call this group two. As far as like these boxes, you want to go to group two, the second row, the fourth button from the right, which is here. Once you select that, you can press the N key. If you don't see this menu, if you do see it, you don't need to press the N key. Uh, go to item. You'll see all these different options here. What I want you to do now is go to torso select the rig so that only the rig is selected so see this highlight going around the 2d art we don't want that select here once you have that you're going to go to the upper left go to pose mode with this selected you'll press g okay there we go and i'm rotating my mouse to make sure that uh, the 2d art is now connected to the armature rig which it is so what i'm going to do now is left click go to the upper left then go to object mode. Okay, so since we know that automatic weighting worked, we're gonna hold shift, hold the mouse button to move this over. I'm rotating the view so I can see that this piece is like equal with that. So what I'm gonna do is select this piece. See how when we select this piece, it's move tools all the way up there. Here's the origin point for this. We can make this easier to work with by going to object. Set origin, origin to geometry. Now the origin is there. We'll do the same for the tail. Object, set origin to geometry. Okay, with that done now, we'll select this, move this over into place. I'm gonna make this bigger by pressing the S key. Push this down. This is intersecting with the uh, the mesh because it's well, it's actually behind it. We want this to be slightly in front. Hopefully you can see that. Not too far, but slightly in front. All right, so now I'm gonna select here, move this back. It's my cat back there insisting to be paid attention to. I'm paying attention to making the video rather than her. Apparently she doesn't like that. So I position this tail right behind here. Okay, since we have those uh, two objects in place, we wanna make sure that we have this third from the right uh, layer selected. With this layer selected, we want to make sure we have the specific bone that we want to have this uh, this piece here as well as the tail connected to. So how do we do that? Well, what I can do is with the armature selected, go to the upper left, go to pose mode. I want, this is the bone right here. This is the one bone out of all of these bones selected. So I have this selected, right? Now I go to object mode. Blender will remember that the last bone I selected was that bone, right? So now I can select here, right? Hold shift, I'm selecting the entire armature. I'm letting go of shift. Blender knows that it's this bone that I selected in pose mode. So I'm gonna hold control, press P. And then what I wanna do for this, it, last time we selected automatic weights, this time I'm gonna select bone. So I'm gonna deselect. Still, when we were in pose mode, that was the last bone selected. So I'm gonna select the tail first, 
hold shift, and even though it looks like I'm selecting the entire armature bone, which I did, Blender knows that I want to work specifically with this bone here. It's important, I want this bone to work with this tail, all right? So now I do that again, Control P, and then at the set parent menu, set parent two menu opens up, I select bone. Okay, the reason why I selected bone is in this case, I don't want the tail to be bend with the, uh, the uh, rested armature. I want when this moves down, particularly this bone, I want the tail to move down. I'm not interested so much in it bending. Same thing with this piece. I want this when this go this being this whole armature goes down, I want this piece to go with it. That's why I chose bone instead of automatic weights. See how this leg is set up to bend? Like we need this to bend, right? That's why we use automatic weights for that, automatic weights for this, automatic weights for that. The reason why we just chose bone is bone lets you, basically I use bone to connect pieces like what we just did. Uh, hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm gonna roll the mouse wheel back. Okay, so let's make sure that that worked. So how we're gonna do that, we're gonna select this next bone over, which is the root bone. We're gonna go to item in this end pin, in panel that's why you can see this so then what i'm going to do is i'm going to select torso i'm going to select torso go to the upper left go to pose mode i'll make sure i'm selected on torso then i'll press g and what i'm looking for is to make sure that the uh the tail rotates as well as this piece i hold alt press r and then g piece is probably too close. What I'm going to do is go to object mode. I should be able to rotate this. Oop, I don't want to rotate. I'm going to press R to rotate on the Y, X, Z axis. There we go. Rotate that out some. Can I move this while it's connected? I believe I can. Move that forward. Select here, go to pose mode. Hold shift as well as the middle mouse button to pan. Press G, oops, just this. Somewhat better. Okay, so this actually is working better than I thought it it, it would as far as uh, like how it, it moves, that the automatic Automatic painting worked very well. So one thing I want to change, see how the arms, I, I move the body, see how the arms are locked in place? This is because IKs are set up. IKs are inverse kinematics. Inverse kinematics basically are, um, uh, it's when you have something that pushes against a force, right? This works very well for legs because legs push against the ground. Typically, you know, you're typically standing on the ground, right? Arms, IKs, I mean, for, uh, yeah, IKs, I don't particularly care for IKs on arms most of the time because, like, if you're doing push-ups, your arms are pushing on the ground, you would use IK, right? This is uh, in the air, so this would be forward kinematic. So we can set this up pretty easily with Rigify, and the way we can do that is, so right now we have just this torso one, right? See this uh, arm IK? We'll select this. And we'll select uh, arm 4k yeah this okay arm okay here's the 4 kinematic so what we can do here is i'm going to select here right so this is the uh the left arm see this ik dash fk if i turn this up this will turn off well this will turn the four the four kinematics on so remember ik is like you're pushing against something a force like the ground my arm is not pushing against some four kinematics is like your your like a, like a hand that's that's hanging from your your shoulder. So I'm going to turn this all the way up. I'm going to click this other bone, and this bone is the controller for uh, IK, right? I'm going to turn this all the way up. So now with that all the way up, I should be able to click on the waist, press G. Do you see how the arms move down now with the arms instead of being in the air? 
Rigify makes this very easy to change. You don't see the setting. However, if I, if I click there, now I can see the setting. So if you want to change this, you can change this back pretty easily. Make sure you click on these handles that represent the uh, IK. And then with uh, the settings here for left or here uh, for right, you can turn this on or off. Okay, as far as extending the rig for this uh, more, you could, uh, I, have, I have another rig uh, or tutorial showing how to set up a, a 2D rig. You can have the eye blink. You could set this up, like when we were in GIMP, you could set this up to the mouth opens. You could have teeth in there, the ears. You could use like bendy bones on the ears, bendy bones on the tail. You could you could do that. We'll see how, you know, let me know how you like this video. Uh, you know, that, that, I just want you, we're not going to do that now. But I want you to know that that's possible. Like you could do some amazing stuff. I mean, you really can can add a lot more. That being said, this is a nice way of having 2D artwork and being able to, to have nice control over it and animate it well, and to have the animation actually animate nicely, to animate smoothly. Okay, as far as animating this, uh, make sure you have your leg IK is turned on with this root turned on. If I select the head and press G, we can uh, rotate the head. I can press R to rotate the, the head like that. I can select the uh, forward kinematics, press R. I can rotate, rotate this in different directions. I can click the upper arm to rotate the upper arm. Okay, so you see how the body, when I rotate the arm, is pushing the body in. Let's deal with this. Well, we'll deal with that after we go through. Let's actually, by rotating, you can kind of see how your rig is, is working, if it's working uh, how you want it to. So when you work with these uh, IKs for the legs here, we press G. We can see, like, this looks like it's working well. Most of this looks like it's working uh, actually very well. This right here, when I click this to press R to rotate, see how the body is, like, bending in? So what I'm going to do is push this in like that, leave that in that position. Okay, I'm going to zoom in. So what this is, is, is doing is this arm is controlling this chest part here. I don't want that in this situation. And that is uh, dealing with uh, weight painting is how you typically deal with situations like this. If you want to reset a bone, by the way, like the head here, if I hold Alt, press G, the head would jump back to its original position. The same thing with uh, the rest of the body. Uh, you can press Alt-R to reset rotations, Alt-G to reset location. So I'll press R. So see how the body's like, moving? I don't like that. So I'm going to push the body. You know what? I think I'll push the body. I'm looking for a position where I can see this change. I think here is better. So I'm setting this up to put this in a good position where I can weight paint. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this bone layer here, right? So to see these layers here, it's like the little running man thing, right? I'm going to click here. I learned this from the CG Dive YouTube channel. He has a CG Dive, has excellent tutorials on rigging, weight painting, all that. I learned how to set up weight painting uh, for Rigify on the YouTube channel CG dive. Uh, if you want to learn more detailed about this, I recommend you go check out the YouTube channel CG dive. I learned this again from CG dive. I want to give credit where credit's there. Anyway, uh, with this selected here, uh, this sets up, gives us the bones we need to weight paint. So I'm going to go to the upper left, go to object mode with these bones selected. With that layer selected, the way we see this layer remembers from this running man uh, little symbol there. I'm going to hold shift. Select 2D art, and then now with those both selected, what I can do is go to the upper left and then go to Wink Paint. Okay, what I'm going to do now is hold Control and then left click on the bone. So this bone here looks fine. This bone does not. So I'm holding Control. Also learned that from CG Dive as well. Uh, so I don't want to have this selected here, right? I want the bone, the arm connected control, but not this here. So what I can do is I have this draw. These are different tools for weight painting. So we have the draw brush. So I have this uh, this here 
selected. This is 100% weight. I'm going to turn this down to 0% weight. And what I'm trying to do is to paint. Take away this... Uh, I'm trying to take away this weight. As I take it away, see how this the mesh is actually moving? Now that worked. So I'm left clicking in it. Oh, it worked much better than I thought it would. Very good. I still have the arm selected as well. Like I still have the weight painting on the arm, which is good. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go to the uh, object mode, right? So let's click here. We'll go to pose mode. We'll turn back on root, uh, leg inverse kinematics, particularly the uh, arm kinematics. We'll turn off this layer there. Uh, yeah, we don't want that layer. Let's select there. There we go. So, okay, here we go. Leg, IK, arm, four kinematics, torso. So with this selected, we'll click here, and then let's press R to rotate. See how now, like, we're, we are still getting, we're still getting uh, some here, but uh, it's a lot better. So I'll move this here, go back to object mode, hold shift, select the mesh, go back to weight paint mode. And now that looks better. Go back to object mode, select here, go to pose mode. Much better. And depending on how much time you, you spend, you can get better results. Hopefully this is a, uh, let me see how this is. What we can see how this is intersecting. I can press R to rotate on the X axis to push the arm back. Yeah, but that's how you uh, weight paint. Typically you're gonna, most likely have to do some weight painting so it's good for you to know about. I'm going to uh, go back to object mode. Okay, well, I have this window here. If I hover over, when I hover over this window, see how like this window responds. When I hover over this window, I'm rolling the mouse, this window responds. Very nice. What you can do is use this window as a way of seeing your artwork without all of your bones. So if I, I'm rolling the mouse here, this is the outliner window. I'll select that. So now we see this here. Um, I can press the uh, T key and then select that. Okay, now we just see the character. So now when we what we do here, we're able to look here at our character without the control, see what's going on. However, we have our controls here. So this tends to be a nice setup to uh to work when you're you're posing your characters. Okay, so now you know how to set up a, a 2D art to be animated in Blender using an uh an armature, as well as how to work with that with uh Rigify. Uh yeah, it's a Blender, you know, it's an incredible program. What you can do is uh, excellent. Uh, its ability to work with 2D is uh, is very good as well. Uh, so, yeah, I was happy um, to be able to make this tutorial. And, uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. That is it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, send me your comments. Uh, uh, I'll try to answer your, your questions. I hope you're able to, to use your characters and have them animate smoothly in a way that, uh, that you like. For all of those of you out there who like the videos on this channel and we share them, thank you very much. I really appreciate that. And for those of you who are new to this channel, if you like the videos on this channel, you would like to see more, please subscribe and thank you for viewing.